What's up YouTube fans? Today we'll be looking at the KFC Crash Hog, their version of Rekgar. This figure did come out a while ago, but I finally got it from Baba Bobo. If you're interested in buying this figure, you can pick it up from the link in the description below. Uh, he has it for a pretty good price. I don't know if this was a reissue or if he just had extra stock, but I got it for a good price. I figured I'd pick it up. Um, the box is actually pretty cool. It's got some nice artwork on it. I don't know who did the artwork, but on the inside you've got some comics book sort of uh, images here. You've got a write-up here. It's pretty cool. Recycle Warriors of a Space Apocalypse. It's, it's kind of neat. You know, it's almost got its own story. The instruction manual also has a comic. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Uh, but this is Keith's Fantasy Club. They haven't really put out anything in a long time. Um, very few figures. Mostly their ex transbots line is where they're spending most of their time. On the side, you've got some Japanese writing. On this side, on the back, you've got just a line art drawing of the robot mode. On this side, you've got a line art drawing of the motorcycle mode. And on the top and bottom, just some writing. EV Metal. That was the name of the masterpiece G1 line that they had. Um, but that's really it for the box. It is a really nice quality box, but I don't think they needed to spend the money on the box. It's really, uh, and most companies are now not spending much on the packaging, very simple packaging, especially with the window box. There's no reason to have a window box. Uh, but that's really it for the packaging. Let's get the figure out and uh, take a look. And here we have the figure. He comes with a ton of accessories. I have him kind of bare right now because I just want to show him without anything. Uh, and in fact, actually, it's not even Barry. He's got these little spikes in there. So let's take that off. And now he's completely bare. He's got no added uh, accessories on him. And it's a pretty clean butt. I mean, it's just got a nice flat back. You know, it's, it's pretty cool how they got this to transform into motorcycle. And it's a very clean transformation. There's not a lot of kibble. Uh, you do have the saddlebags here on the side, but those kind of fit. They almost look like uh, holsters or whatever for his robot mode, so I like those, and I, I think they're um, cartoon accurate. Uh, you also have this little bit of kibble here on the back. It's kind of a tail. There's not really much you can do with it. You can fold it up like that so you can't see it from the front, or you can fold it down, but then you can see it. So the best I've found is up like that. And that's out of the way. It doesn't really hinder anything, and you don't see it. Nobody's looking at the back of the figure, so it's fine. Now, let's take a look at the ton of accessories you get with this guy. So you get the guns, you get an axe, you do get the, basically the struts for the vehicle mode. Now, these have to be removed for the transformation. Technically, I guess you could leave them on. They actually go right here on the back of the figure. Technically, you'd leave them on there, but they'd be sticking way out like that. So, I don't know if you'd want to do that. It's kind of ugly. It's kind of bulky. So, but they also turn into weapons, which is really cool. They, they you know, I, I didn't really like the fact that it's parts forming, but that's what this guy's all about. You know, he's a junkie on, and he just has a lot of junk. You know, he comes with a lot of stuff, and he adds stuff onto his body. And, it kind of fits with the theme of this guy. So I'm not bad at it. I think it's okay. Let's take a look at how we can put this stuff on now. He's got a lot of ports. So you've got one, two, three on the arm, and you've got one, two on the leg. I do have these pegs in here, and they're actually in there pretty good. Um, they're pretty hard to get out, so I'm not going to do too much effort, but there's another hole there for those pegs. Um, I use those to mount stuff, so I'm going to leave those on there, but you can take those pegs out. Uh, these are rubberized little pieces here. They do look good. You know, they got, a, they got a pretty good lick to them. I think they're... Come on. I think they're just little rubber pieces, and, and they and they kind of really add to his look. I do wish they were permanent there, but I think they they didn't make them permanently mounted because they wanted you to have the flexibility of mounting stuff wherever you wanted. So I do these do tend to pop off as you're playing with the figure, manipulating things. So you kind of got to be careful not to lose these. I almost want to glue them in, but it's it's kind of tough to glue them in because the transformation doesn't really support gluing these in. Now, I think this is the cartoon accurate place to put these spikes. We'll leave them there for now. Let's get everything else on here. Uh, you do get these wheels. So these wheels 
are, oh, they do spin on this axis here. Um, and they got the spikes, just like they do in the movie. Now, these, I think, are supposed to mount here. And down here. Now, you want to take this out if you want to put it on there. But I like to put these struts. I don't like any extra pieces kind of hanging off the thing. So I like to put these struts down at the bottom. So I just sort of hang them off of here like that on both sides. And it's it's not very intrusive at all. It just sort of adds to his leg like that. I think that's okay. Uh, and then you can mount this wheel with the, the screw inwards into that peg hole. So there's a million different options for displaying this guy. And that, I think that's what people really love about this figure is the playability and just the... The posability, because of all the options, you, you really have infinite display options. Uh, and then we'll take a look. So these are just standard guns. They have the standard masterpiece pegs in them. So let's take a look at all of these. You can also mount these anywhere on any of the peg holes on the side. So we'll get these in and take a look at those. And there you have them with the guns mounted. I put one in each hand, and then I put one kind of on the side there. Oops. And I think that looks pretty good. You have a million options again, so you can have it kind of wherever way you want. And there he is with the axe in the hand, and it does look pretty good. I just, it's not for me. I don't really care for, uh, you know, this this weapon, but it does it does mount in there. It, um, the hand is a little bit finicky with the fingers. It tends to kind of get its own way, and that's true for the guns too, but... It does mount in there nice and secure and it looks really good. It's just this accessory in particular is not for me. So there it is with the fridge accessory, whatever this is. He did, I guess he used this as a drum in the movie. And it is attached to his hand just like the regular weapons. But I don't know, this isn't for me, but I'm glad they include it for those that do want to display with this option. Uh, you can also just display it kind of next to him. You know, sitting on the ground like that. I don't know. It's just it just seems like a strange choice for an accessory. You know, when you have all these guns and stuff. I don't know if this changed the cost of the figure, but if they said that this increased the cost, I would have said don't include it. <laughs> um, but that's really it for the robot mode accessories. Let's take a look at articulation. Now I have removed all of the accessories here. You can articulate him with those accessories, but it just kind of gets in the way and it's sort of a pain, but you can have everything on there. So uh, his head is on a swivel. It's not a ball joint. It's a, uh, oh, I don't know. It's hard to tell. It looks like it's a swivel. Um, so you can get him all the way left and right, up and down. You got plenty of movement. This uh, beard piece is rubberized so you know you can't not to worry about uh, breaking it I, I hope uh, these ears are also articulating so they can fold backwards that's mainly for transformation but you can kind of get it folded back if you like that look um, me I like them all the way out like this but it's nice that you can do that um, the arm rotates on this joint it's a really tight ratcheted joint it sometimes tends to pop this out so you want to Put a thumb right there and hold it just so there's no stress on the plastic that kind of holds it in place it also goes out all the way to there you have a rotation of the bicep you have a double jointed elbow all the way up to there plenty of articulation there nice looking elbow rotation at the wrist a fully articulated hand although this hand really irritates me irritates me because some of these joints are loose and the finger tends to flop around and get in the way but it's nice. I'd rather have a non-articulated hand than have to deal with this. If you put it in a fist, you can kind of get it to stop bothering you. But it, it still comes loose. You do have a rotation at the waist. It's a ratcheted uh, rotation. No uh, ab crunch. You do have these hip skirts. Well, I guess they're hip skirts in robot mode, but they're really saddlebags in the vehicle mode. Now you do get to open up this piece here, and I do have the accessory in there. That's the little TV that he came with uh, in the movie. He he was watching TV, loved TV, 
And that's a cool little accessory, you know, it comes out, you can actually take that out of there. I'm just gonna leave that in there, but a uh, nice little thought there to include that, and that does kind of stay in there, so that's cool. By the way, this guy is, he's got lots of nice detail and colors on him. Uh, we'll, we'll do a 360 in a minute here after we finish articulation. Uh, you do, and so you can rotate these out of the way to get them, you know, out of the way of the legs. You do have a hip skirt, hip skirt in the front here. It rotates all the way to the front on a strong, heavy ratchet. It goes back to there, and there's basically a piece of plastic here angled that stops you from going any further. It does go all the way up to there, but again, it's uh, hindered by the plastic that's in the way. But plenty of it because you don't need to go any further than that. Um, nice ratcheted knee gets you a 90 degree bend all the way up to there. Uh, you have a lot of die cast down here. Um, you know, pretty much all of this piece is die cast. I think there's die cast in this foot as well and maybe even the, the leg. Uh, it is one of the issues these things kind of fall off, but so just gotta be careful not to lose those pieces because they're they're pretty easy to, to to lose track of. So be careful with those. Uh, then you do get the ankle tilt and ankle pivot all the way. You also have this heel spur here that you can kind of angle into the right direction to get good poses. Uh, on the back of the figure, you do have this little tail piece. It, it becomes the uh, the seat in the motorcycle mode. You can fold it up like that and kind of get it out of the way. And that's probably the best option there, is to get it up like that. If you put it downwards, it does flatten the back, but then from the front you can see it. So you kind of want that up out of the way. That's at least what I found to be the best display option. Um, so with all that articulation, you can really get this guy into good poses. Um, I just, you know, whenever I can pose something very quickly and it looks good, that means it's a well-articulated figure. So just by accident, you can get into some pretty good poses here. And I like this. I like this design and I like this character. I think they did a good job with the robot mode. Now one thing we haven't done yet is taking a look at the cartoon. So let's take a look at the G1 cartoon and I think we'll see he's pretty darn close to the cartoon. Different scenes didn't have these these spots and things kind of moved around but all in all this thing looks really good compared to the cartoon. I think they, they nailed it with this with this mold. Uh, we'll take a look at the vehicle mode to see how close that is, but I think both are pretty nail it pretty well. Um, so that's really it for the robot mode. We went through all the accessories and a lot of stuff with this guy. Um, and so you get a good value in the robot mode. Um, since we've seen this figure before in other uh, reviews, I'm not going to go over the transformation here. Uh, but if you're interested, you can take a look at some other reviews. But I'm going to get this guy into vehicle mode and we'll be right back. And here we have Rekgar in vehicle mode. Uh, I guess, sorry, his name is Crash Hawk, but we know my Rekgar. And what a beautiful, beautiful vehicle mode. I mean, this is so well done. Um, just the colors and the, the look of it. Now, the scale, you know, is not going to be, you know, Earth vehicle size. So here is... Good old blue streak and he's gigantic you know this just doesn't make any sense but i don't think it should right he's really a robot or sorry a vehicle on the junkion planet right he's the size that other junkions can ride him so he should be the size of robots if you bring in a robot here he is with cup or fans toys coot and this scales really well and he actually can sit on here, which is pretty neat. Um, he can sit on the seat and, and kind of ride the thing, which is pretty cool. There you go. So you, you can get, you can, I could fix his pose a little bit, but you can get him on there. And it looks good. So I kind of like the size, you know, because he's a motorcycle that the other Autobots can ride. He's not just a motorcycle that's in scale with the other vehicles. Uh, and I think 
that's good. You know, I think that's fine. That's how it should be. I don't. So I don't think there's anything wrong with scale. I just wanted to show you how he how he looked against it. Now there's a lot of stuff you can do here. So you've got kickstands there on both sides on the bottom, and he can stand up. You can kind of get that pose different ways. You can have it without the kickstands, and he will just sort of lean to one side. You can turn this wheel, just because of the way it's designed, you can turn that wheel and have that kind of pose that way, which is really just very creative. Uh, you do have the springs. This doesn't actually really spring up and down. It's just for looks, but it looks good. You know, that, that, that was a good thought, a good design. Uh, he obviously, you know, doesn't roll well because he's got these spikes in his wheels, but I don't really care about that. I just think the look of it is so good. That's, it's exactly what I want. Now you do get these saddlebags do open up in vehicle mode. And again, I've got the TV in there. Uh, there's a lot you can do here. So all of those weapons that you had before, they all still will hang on in vehicle mode so you can get both of them on. So here is one spot you can put it. There's a million spots you can put everything, but there's one spot you can put it. Uh, you could put this gun here, or you could put it maybe up here. Like I mean, you can put it in a million different places. Pretty much all of the accessories can mount on this guy. Now, he does come with a bunch of bike accessories. The problem with these is they fall off. So you kind of have to be careful with them, but it basically has, you know, handle, these go right on the handlebars, and these are die cast, by the way. Um, these clip right on, these are the, the brake and the clutch, and they go right on there, and then you got the rear view mirrors, and these are just this gray plastic. They don't really have a good paint on them or anything like that, but they look good. The problem is you can't transform it with these. It'll break or it'll fall off. So it's it's not quite, you know, what what I would expect in a masterpiece. You know, I expect this to kind of fold away. I, mean, I don't really expect it to have pieces that you have to take off. But if you want to complete the look of the bike, that definitely does it. So I really like this. I, I think they did a great job with this vehicle mode. I love the look of it. I think it's very G1 accurate. Speaking of, let's take a look at the G1 cartoon. And I think we'll see this thing really hits the mark with the cartoon. Uh, all the colors, just the styling in general, it, it just really reminds you of the G1 cartoon. So, so I, I think he fits very well with the current Season 2 figures we've been getting from Fans Toys. There aren't a lot of Season 2 official figures, but at least with the Fans Toys ones, it does fit in pretty well. And here he is. I'll just leave Coot there. Uh, and I plan to keep him on our shelf with Fans Toys Coot. But that's really it. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.